What's happening, everybody? It's Ike from Flipside Music, and welcome to What the Fuck episode, no, season three, <laughs> episode 46. Yes. I believe. Uh, and as always, I'm here with Dylan. Yes. And uh, we're almost, we're closing in. Yeah, it's uh, this week and next week, right? That's it. This is next week the, well, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's two, yeah, two, two episodes left for this season. What's going to happen in, <laughs> yeah. in the season finale? What's the cliffhanger? Yeah, exactly. Will Dylan show us what's under the bowler? No. Here, I'll show you what's under the hat. <laughs> Fucking literally nothing. It's a preview of the future. Look, look <laughs> at the shininess. Yeah, like, this is a freshly polished. No, yeah. Dylan, all this is it's for one I, day for you. Yeah. <laughs> I see your future. It's yeah, okay. it sucks. That's what it happens. <laughs> I know. Getting old sucks. I'll save a lot of money on shampoo, I guess. That's what I say. Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry. Weekly question and answer <laughs> yeah. show. Sorry, I went off on a tangent. Uh, you ask a question, we answer it, and that's it. So, starting out this week, uh, who do you want to go with? Um, well, let's go with Colin, because Colin had some shit happen, so we oh, can yeah. kind of take a minute to at least say we're glad he's okay. Yes. So Colin had a little bit of a yeah health scare. So we're glad that you're you're doing well, man. He had so. a, a mild cardiac event. Well, okay. yes, that's what we'll say. Yeah. So he says, since my heart scare, um, I've had to cut salt and sodium pretty much out of my diet, which is understandable. That seems to usually be salt. Salt is a tough thing. You have got to be careful with that stuff. Anyway. Uh, when I do allow myself a cheat, it, it has to be worth it. So, question for next time. That's this time. Hamburgers or tacos? And what is your favorite place to get your favored choice? So, hamburgers or tacos, and where's our favorite place? I've gone over this because I tell you, you already know where I'm going to say. Yeah, I think so. I need to find a better, like, a better taco place because, like, Usually when I have tacos that like either are either homemade or that like other people make but still homemade, mm -hmm. they're always like way better than anything I've ever had from like a restaurant. At least I, I don't know because like I feel like a lot of places, especially in Colorado, you, and I know everybody complains about that, but we get like a mix because we get like the the true to form like Mexican style stuff, and then we also get the the more like Tex Mex stuff that's. Weird because it's like Texans that weren't really that committed to like the hot part of Texas and cheese whiz. Yeah, so yeah, so it's like all these I'm still weird. Still convinced that that Tex Mex is just cheese whiz. Well, and there's that. I mean, yeah, but like at the end of the day, like Taco Bell and a lot of that stuff boils well, that down. Matter. I know, no, but I'm just saying like that is the the origin of kind of the people's basis for Tex Mex in Colorado, which is not good. So, I think I don't know. I'm gonna go with like I guess if it's homemade tacos. In terms of burgers. Well, I think you should go down on some of these, some spots down here on South Federal. Well, I know it's going to sound weird, but there's a taco truck up in Leadville, and that would be my favorite. <laughs> I don't even know the name. I've just been, go I've been going there truck. for, yeah, I've been going there for, like, literally since I was, like, 13, 14, I think. And, uh, yeah, it's just funny because they don't really even have a name. It's just, like, a blank. It's just, it's just And it's always there, and it's always been there. That's, yeah. That's all right. So, yeah, in that case, yeah, but usually I actually get burritos from them. Um, <laughs> but they do make some great tacos. Um, I don't know. Burgers, though, like, what would you say? Well, go ahead with your answer, and then also on top So, of me, it's probably burgers, and my favorite burger place is Shaler's in Rochester, New York. Okay. Well, yeah, that's, but what about here? Here? I don't... The see, that's the problem. Here. Yeah, that is the, that's the there's problem. No, there's, the problem is I grew up on those kinds of burgers... So where I grew up, it was all, it was, they used to call it like a charbroil or, you know, they're mm -hmm. called, you know, so our, hot, our hamburger places were always different. You didn't get hamburgers with lettuce and tomato on them. Like that wasn't a thing. And I well, think yeah, we no, talked about my, this in other videos where we have like the meat hot sauce. Right. So it's usually like onions. Which that I find more interesting because like in the South, they also, well, at least the parts of the South that my, more of my family was from. They generally didn't do lettuce and tomatoes either, because my grandpa always said that that's a sandwich. He's like, that's not a burger anymore. But uh, yeah, that was always his thing was like, if you put lettuce and tomato on it, it's not a burger anymore. Yeah, I just it's don't. A, it's a sandwich. He's like, yeah, it's a patty, it's a burger, but it's a burger sandwich. It's not like a burger. Um, 
See, burgers down there are very like. Well, no, you're not. I can I can understand what he's saying though. Yeah, I can kind of agree. I don't like burgers with lettuce and tomato. I'm not saying that I won't eat it. It's a different kind of burger. Oh, and mayonnaise. As as yeah, concerned. yeah. He would. Yeah, mayonnaise no. was a sin in, turn, in the world of burgerdom. I just never. We never ate a lot of mayonnaise. No, life, but I was just saying. Like, just I think people work. assume like when you say South, like all of a sudden mayonnaise enters into it, and it's like no. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I mean, that's what. Although I think my mom actually does like mayonnaise which, on burgers, which is kind of funny. But but uh, yeah, I don't know. My grandpa always said burgers were basically just you know. Cheese, onions, pickles, and, and then any, yeah, and then, and, and yeah, like a buttered bun and the burger. Topping. Yeah. I, well, I, that's the preferred way. Yeah. But shalers, that's basically cheese, burger, meat, hot sauce, onions. They might put a little. Well, yeah, the meat, hot them. sauce. That's the that's the yeah. interesting part. Yeah. The, <laughs> it's really good. You come, you can come over. I got my sister sending me buns from <laughs> the whole place thing. that makes the buns <laughs> for them. She said she's literally sending them from New York. That's funny. Me. You can come over and yeah. try it. Anyway, so we that was way too long about burgers and shit. So for me, it's Shaler's from Rochester. Okay. And I would go with burger. Okay. Moving on. Something more musical now. All right. Question for next week from Ben Coombs. Uh, at what price point do you think a guitar should come with a hard shell case? That's a good question because we That's actually a have very this. Good question. Yeah, we have this debate a lot, especially with customers. Yeah. Um, we can't seem to find a rhyme or reason to the current way that. The market decides when you get a case or not because um, there's some stuff like the like the Frankie like I think straight up that should have regardless of what price increases have done to the price now right. it still should have come with a case when it yeah, came out the EVH yeah Frankie yeah it, it doesn't even come with a gig bag right and it's like but then you can get like a what a $200 two hundred dollar two two twenty nine starter pack and you'll get a gig bag you could and buy it's like a, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, you could buy a hundred or two hundred dollar CD sixty acoustic right. guitar and get a case. Right. So is, weird. So where? Okay. So at what price point do you think a case should be included? I think when the cost of the case roughly gets to be about five to ten percent of the overall guitar. So for me, that's generally going to start happening. I think. Once you start getting in like the seven fifty thousand range, I think gig bags should certainly be part of it. Like I th like just even for us to sell them, I think it'd be easier if we could just have a gig bag for every guitar. Like that would just be a lot well, easier because customers expect something to get it home in, and it's like half the time we just gotta like put the the packaging back on, and it's like I just still I, I mean I get it that's the easiest place to cut costs. But I think if you're going to hit the thousand mark or above is when it starts to, I feel like, you know, is worthy of a case. That, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. So for me, I think about a thousand bucks, you should get a case. Anything for a thousand bucks or more yeah. should get a case. At that point, it doesn't looking... have to be the world's greatest case. It just needs to be like a, a mm -hmm. decent case. Yeah, it's like one of those basic wood Tolex cases. Yeah, like an yeah. economy gator case would be, would be fine. Mm -hmm. And I think anything over 500 bucks should at least get some kind of... It would be nice to have some type of a gig bag. Yeah. Now, we do things a little bit different at the store. So anybody that buys a guitar, you know, if it comes with a gig bag, obviously they get it. If they want to upgrade, we always offer 15% off any case if yeah, you buy and, the guitar. And you don't know, yeah, and you, it doesn't always have to be like the moment you buy the guitar. Yeah. Like we do that. If you bought a guitar from us and you need a case for it. Yeah, we usually yeah. extend that out for like yeah. 30 days. Yeah, that way if somebody decides and they get home, they're like, oh shit, I probably should have gone with the hard case. I moved it and I already dinged it or something, which has happened a few times. Yeah. Then they come in and get a hard case. So we usually still stand by that for a period. So. Yeah, because, you know, it's a utility thing. and buying, They're not fun to buy. Yeah, but, buying utility shit is not sexy. Yeah. You know? But yeah, I mean, I think a thousand because at that point, you know, like to me, that's when you start getting into, like I said, that five to ten percent of the cost kind of range and like to me that starts to make more sense in terms of the numbers that these companies are doing yeah it's not and a thousand dollars isn't a cheap guitar no no you know? i mean so. well no and for everybody because like wages obviously and everything does not keep up with where the market is so it's like the you know the shit goes crazy like it did this year in terms of inflation but nobody's wages got increased as many times as fender had price increases right so it's like eventually there's got to be like a spot because a lot of it ends up being you know that gap for cases i feel like is getting wider and wider and wider to where now you know you're you're very lucky to get a case if you buy something in the the 12 to 1500 dollar range even 2000 you're not guaranteed to get one yeah and it's like that's kind of that's still kind of crazy right i think that's just dollars yeah. 1600 guitars and you don't get a case right 
It's a little tough. Yeah. Okay, so moving on, Metalhead Hippie, it's happening, dude, says, with the advent of amp sims, IRs, and the like, um, and even some multi-effects units, how has this affected your pedal, amp, and other certain effects sales? Is this even an issue for you, us? Uh, people wanting PC effects over the physical pedals and amps. Is some gear on the way out or decline? Do you want to start at the end or the beginning of that one? Because I, I feel like the end of it's almost a quicker question to answer. But we can start at the end. That's fine. Okay. Because yeah, in terms of gear on the way out or in decline, um, rack gear. And I think that's. I I felt like if it was going to come back by now, it would have, and it only seems to still be a relevant thing for for bands that want to do more of more studio or more like have their own rehearsal space. Like mm -hmm. if you're getting to that point with your band, that's where rack gear factors in. But for like the home musician. I kind of feel like Rat Gear, for the most part, is kind of on its way out. Because it's like it kind of it I does that every few years and it kind of yeah, resurfaces. I, I think it's been out for a while. And I think there was people, there was talk for a while that, oh, Rat Gear is going to come back. Right. But we, no, I think it's finally actually. Yeah, we haven't seen anything, at least yeah. in our our shop or anything like that. We haven't seen anybody really looking for right. uh, Rack stuff. So, yeah, I would kind of say that that might be on the decline yeah um as far as yeah and if we want to go back to the beginning and like yeah are, are the multi-effects units affecting our sales of pedals or amps um i don't think the multi-effects are affecting too much because i think they have a place well they and it doesn't necessarily replace people's individual pedals i think what they're doing is they're doing yeah. both they get a multi-effect yeah. like a hx stomp or let's say the, or the GT, the GT uh, you know, the Boss GT Core, which is killer. Yeah. I think they have a special usage for that that isn't necessarily the same as what the other pedals that they have do. And that's so it could what be I was like a fly say. rig yeah. or they're playing with church. Yeah, I feel like, like the multi effects I, yeah. end up being like either practice boards or like this is my travel and go setup or like this is the, you know, I'm going to my buddy's house and I'm going to jam and we're not doing our full amp setup. Right. Like that's usually what I feel like a lot of those, at least for our customers. I got to say though, too, like our, and we might be biased in this regard, most of our stuff is for, for like the standalone pedal crowd. So I feel like a lot of our customers by default end up being more in that that vein but those guys are funny too because in a weird way the multi-effects I, I think it hasn't really detracted from anything if anything it's just boosted but yeah everything because a lot of guys too will have that they'll give it a shot thinking like it's going to solve all their problems and then they'll find something in that that they can't switch out or whatever it is and then they'll go back and then like you said a lot of the guys that have the means just end up kind of going with both at some point yeah and for different uses yes yeah you know, yeah it could be the same like Getting the same sounds, but in an easier to travel. Because like the like the GT core, like you, you're knocking out your effects, your amp, your cab, your tuner, all of it. It's all one unit. Like literally, everything is there. Yeah, MJ has a board. The whole thing is like this big now, and it's like, and that's his like his travel board for when he's going to go to Europe. But it's like he literally took you know a pro level board and condensed it down to like three pedals now with just the GT core, and it's like, and it's pretty damn effective because uh, he actually used it for the. Uh, the little wonder demo we just put out. Oh, okay. that was all like the bass, the guitar, all of that was all on. The, it was all through that. Yeah, the GT core. So it's like. So there you go. Yeah, so it's like you can do some pretty effective stuff with it, and kind of like we were talking about, if you're tracking at home, you can, you know, sometimes it's just easier to have all that stuff in one thing that you can mess with on your desk, rather than having to, you know, go to your music room or your rehearsal space and set all your stuff up and mic your stuff up. And yeah, it's sometimes there's, it's just easier. Yeah, there's yeah. convenience that goes along with it, and then. Addressing the whole thing about buying effects for like PCs, I guess that's probably for your like your DAW, yeah. And being having plugins, and I think that is is then that's like another kind of leg of the stool, if you will. That well, I was just saying, I feel like be, that's boosting things in a weird way too. Yeah, because that's going to be at home and recording, but you're not necessarily taking that out on the road. So it could be a recording effect, but then you're still going to find that effect in your board or in your multi effect. Right. So I think there's, I think there's room for all of it. Really, is what's happening. Oh, yeah. it's like I think everybody that's kind of in all that, it figures out to what's best for them. So if they're only staying at home and they're only recording at home and they're only doing their stuff in the DAW, then plugins are probably going to be the way they're going to go. But if they ever need to take that 
out somewhere, then they're going to have to figure something out. And maybe the well, that was what I was, the effects were. Yeah, that was what I was just going to say. So, outside of like the quad cortex thing, like there's not a lot of stuff now that lets you take your plugins on the road with you. Right. So it's like, yeah, at that point, and we do have a lot of guys too that are getting, you know, especially that home recording is becoming more of a thing. There's a lot of people that are trying to make more of an effort to get a good sound right away, like least amount of editing, least amount of mixing. There's, you know, there's more drive for that now. And so I feel like a lot of these all in one things, especially if you're just trying to track an idea to send to a buddy, you know, a lot of that stuff, it makes it so much easier that a lot of people, like you said, they're buying it distinctly for a purpose that's separate that from what they're normally doing. Or, you know, it's usually trying to get all of that, but in an easier format. So you don't always have to be, because like, you know, if anybody who's been in any band, even if you're just a band that practices and stuff and you're, you don't even gay, like, you know how big of a pain in the ass it is to move gear. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, that, those multi-effects have Bring this, your guitar, bring your multi-effect, throw it in the... Right, and call it, yeah. ...or whatever, and you can so like, the, gone. But there's still always going to be those guys that want, you know, hands-on, tangible. They want, you know, they want the physical manipulation of the pedal, so... Mm -hmm. I think that's. I think there's always going to be room for both, which I think is cool because there's not a lot of, you know. I mean, short of short of the hipster crowds, it's not like people are running around with vintage phones and shit. It's, right. it's well, <laughs> and, yeah, but you also have those crowd too. Well, yeah, but that's a very you, niche. Whereas yeah. I feel like overall the the guitar crowd is very much about like how do we take the old stuff and the new stuff and kind of bring it all into one thing. Um, yeah. Whereas like a lot of other things are once something's old, it's dismissed and it's you know and it's the Irre last year's thing. irrelevant. Right. Um, what did we have one last one? Gordo? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, last question. Uh, Gordo's just favorite new release of 2021 in terms of gear. Um, so we actually, we got like a ton over the last couple months in terms of pedals anyway. Um, yeah, I'm just So I was going to say, I think I have my pick for that one. I don't know. I'm kind of curious to see what your, your I, pick's going to be. I don't know yet. Um, to be honest, because I'm not really... So, Ben... Most impressive thing from the year? Yeah, that just in terms of new releases or new, you know, new pieces of gear you found super interesting. Mm. I don't know. It's I, a tough one. Well, for me, it's harder to remember. Like I remembered a lot of the more recent ones, so I guess for me, it's almost more of like a six month, like the last six months of twenty twenty. Yeah, okay. Because I, I don't know. I feel so like you're gonna pick. I well, I was going to say, I, I really did like the Heizumidas. Like, I, it's weird because I wasn't, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was not really that into it until we got them in. And then, you know, I, I mean, everybody was funny because I guess I'm weird that way. When people tell me I'm going to like something, I get more doubtful. Yeah. Um, and so, like, but it was just funny because Jake kept saying, like, when it came in, he's like, oh, I think you're going to really like that one. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. And uh, after plugging it in, though, I mean, I know it's just, you know, another variation on a big muff, but I like those little variations. So um, I really liked that one. Just because it had that, you know, Earthquaker has not put out like a, a, a really vintage feeling Big Muff. And I feel like that one had that. Kind of got it. Yeah. So like that one's a great one if you wanted, you know, like a modded tri, tri Muff essentially. Um, so yeah, that would probably be mine. I would say close second I think would be the, um, well, I don't know. I, I The Pandora was pretty cool. I just didn't get to mess with it in tune because yeah. it kind of we got it in like the day before it came out and then that's we sold. A, yeah, it's a it's a cool pedal. I yeah. didn't get to try to try it as much as I wanted to, but yeah, that's a good. I'm mean, I'm I'm still thinking about what. No, no, you're good. Yeah, and that's why I'm just kind of talking, giving you some some I pondering. I got two time. things. So one I think is the Tone Master. Oh yeah, just as a line. Yeah, Tone that's Master a good Deluxe. Yeah, that I thought was really cool. And the I Super. Thought, yeah. Yeah, and the Super. And well, the twin too. And then the other thing, I, and I, these are both Fender products. I think the other one is the Noventa Telecasters, the Super okay. P90. Getting those back, yeah, yeah. I just thought those were really cool. Those are cool. So and the, actually, the, the Ultra strap. Reality series, yeah, I was just saying. And the Strat with the P90s too is another really that was cool. cool one. Like just ones that really stood out mm -hmm. for me. Like were those were those. I, so if you haven't tried it, you should get one. Yeah, I'm trying right to think here. of uh, music. Yeah, Great American Guitar Store. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think of anything. Like I said, for me, it's just, I guess, some of the... We just had a flurry of pedals over, like, the last few months. so much, yeah. That over. came out. So, like, a lot of those... A lot of those were all solid, but... Like I said, I guess the, the Heizumidas is probably the one that jumps out we for me. We had the TB2 this year, yeah. which was really yeah. cool. Oh, and the HM2. Actually, the HM2, that was really fun. That thing, if you guys haven't... Because it was weird. We, we thought there'd be... 
generally a lot more excitement about that, but I guess it's still just, unless you're into Swedish death metal, there's not like a lot of other huge applications for that pedal. But yeah, it still sounds good. But it's yeah, still yeah, I was going to say, anybody who loves that sound, like that is so much fun to just low tune guitar, chuggy riffs on that thing, and like, it's a chuck, blast. Chuck, chuck, yeah, chuck, 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 it's chuck. a blast. Cause like even Nico and I were both like when that came in, it was like it was it was like being like sixteen or seventeen again, and just hearing you know hearing all like enslaved and at the gates and all that stuff again. So I don't know, it just had that sound. It was like like part of your childhood in a in a box. <laughs> um, but outside of those, yeah, I can't really think. I was trying to think of a guitar, but I'm not I'm not really good at remembering when. Cause like to me, like anything Charvel has put out in the last two years has been, yeah, been but amazing. I, think but, I don't think there's anything new that they put out there. Yeah. Although Ben and uh, and uh, JJ, I don't know. They they think the Charvel necks. They like the, the what do they what do they call it? I think they call it like candy roasted or something. And I think they meant oh, caramelized or something. But yeah, they were trying to say the necks were too dark, and I'm like, ah, whatever. I thought they were cool, so you guys let me know. But I, I really love anything. You know, I don't know if you guys get to play them as often, but anything literally we've had from Charvel this year has been phenomenal. Yeah. All the stuff has been really good, yeah. and it hasn't lasted very long either. So right, but yeah, in terms of really good bang for the buck, next like if you're not gonna go for like the Pro Two series, if you're not gonna go classic Pro Two Fender or something, I think other big bang for the buck right now is pretty much anything Charvel's putting out right yeah, now. Yeah, they're putting out good, yeah. good stuff. Yeah. All right, I think that's it. I think that's it too. So all right, happy holidays to everybody because it's at the end of the week. It is right. Yep. So yeah, whatever like holiday it is that you celebrate, knock yourself out. Yeah, make That's sure it's happy. Right, have, yeah. yeah, have a good time. Knock yourself out. Um, so we'll catch you guys on the flip side of Christmas. <laughs> if it's Christmas. On the flip side of Christmas. Flip side of Christmas. On the flip side of Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> da, 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 and uh, something, something, something. Dylan <laughs> in the Speedo. <laughs> what? No. Uh, what? What kind of story is Maybe this? That's how we clean up the neighborhood. <laughs> right. I'll just go running around. With that's a, we just get you a red Speedo. Yeah, I'll get like and a, a katana hat. and a Speedo and just start. <laughs> a red Speedo and a Santa hat and a katana. And yeah. Down, just start slashing. Slashing, with the, yeah. With the RVs. There's some crazy crap as fuck out here. Doing crap as shit. There's a frolicking Arab Viking cutting up all the cars on the street. What kind of shit is this?